Welcome to Daytona TV. So here, I'm here with my daddy. Jermaine. And my name is Valencia, a.k.a. Marcy. And today we're going to be talking about the, condi the conditioning of the mind. Of the mind. Okay. And he wants to read a speech, but it's not actually a speech. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you, Marcy, for uh, the introduction and everything. That's why. Uh, uh, first thing, we all you want to do, you always want to include your children into what you're doing in, uh, in your life and stuff like that. Like I told told you guys earlier, once um, we don't want to hide the word from our kids. And the problem is right now we keep on hiding the word, but the word we're finding all the time. And one of my uh, most uh, beloved persons I have, uh, that I never met and I wish I had met him is Malcolm X and stuff like that. What he always said about the media. The media is most, one of the most powerful enti entities in the world. They have the power to make the, the innocent guilty and make the uh, guilty innocent. And think about that from a uh, historical standpoint and stuff uh, that we always said in ourselves and stuff like that. Think about when Hitler and stuff like that. Everybody hated Hitler, uh, Mussolini, and all the other uh, bad guys. But did y'all know the U.S. and CIA wind up uh, bringing a bunch of Hitler people to the U.S. and then uh, put them in the government, uh, made them in uh, government officials and stuff like that as well? And what I wanted to read from you about Malcolm X too, uh, about us as black people, and what I wanted uh, from this text: Who taught you to hate yourself? Who taught you to hate the texture of your hair? Who taught you to hate the color of your skin to the ex such extent that you bleach your bleach your skin to get the white man skin? Who taught you to hate the shape of your nose and the shape of your lips? Who taught you to hate yourself from the top of your head to the soles of your feet? Who taught you to hate your own kind? Think about what I want to put an emphasis in. Your own kind. Who taught you to hate the race that you belong to so much that you don't want to be around them uh, each day? And what I want to do, I want to, what I want to do and discuss, me and Marshall want to discuss, it's uh, one of my books I, I lo uh, love. They, they probably can't read. Uh, you probably got to reach it up. Yeah, it's, called, got it. it's called The Miseducation of the Negro. You probably can't see it. It's by Carter Goodwin Woodson. Um, I read that book years ago, years ago and stuff like that. But I will, I took a few quotes from him. Uh, and what I want to do, I want to, uh, one of his, the quotes I want to take, I want to go down each one of the quotes and explain how I feel about this situation mm -hmm. and stuff like that. It's just my opinion, but most of the opinions is uh, factual and stuff. And one of the uh, quotes, he's, if you control a man's thinking, you do not have to worry about his actions. And we want to do how we want to do about this, Marcus. We want to take each one of these quotes piece by piece and explain it to you. Well, <laughs> I think we should take it seriously. And also, I think no one should be laughing. And I think that this is really serious. And I think we should take it like easy. Yeah, uh, and we want to go, and what we want to do, we want to take it slow. And what I want to do, all right. Just like I said, I want to reread the quote again. If you control the man's thinking, you do, not, you do not have to worry about his actions. And what I mean by that, have him believe there's always a good and evil in everything they do, especially in politics, because that's the main thing that we struggle with in a daily basis. That if we only just focus on politics alone and stuff like that, with good and, good and evil, that the Republicans are evil, and the Democrats are good or the Republicans are good and the uh, Democrats are bad, then you'll never come to the conclusion that you need to have. And what we always discuss, what I always say in politics, Marx, you don't have no friends in politics. No, you never have any friends unless they're good, but it does not matter if they're good. You don't need friends. No, and what I and I teach my daughter that you don't need friends to benefit yourself. Because your parents are your friend, your family is your friend, yeah. and just like my daddy is my special friend. All right, thank you. And where I want to go on to that, so like that, think about, it. I was looking at an episode uh, with Obama, uh, with Charlemagne, the God, that was uh, interviewing Obama. And they asked, uh, they said, what's the misconception that black people said you never did anything for him? And he brings the broke saying, I don't understand why they said I didn't ever do anything for him. Because he said, income wise, black people were making more money. He gave you health care. He gave you income and all this type of, but income, I want to <laughs> let people understand. <laughs> Your income, back, I always tell everybody, black people lost wealth, not income, under Obama. And your wealth is consisted of your home. 
Income is basically what you make an hour, like a salary or something like that. Like, for instance, I make my income basically. I make when they when you do your income taxes and stuff like that, you, they want to ask you how much you made through that through that through that year. So some people may say I made twenty thousand. Some people may say I made a hundred thousand or so like that. That's income. Wealth is not. You don't do that. Wealth is what you own. That means if you own your home, your home can be worth three hundred thousand. 300,000, your cars and other uh, miscellaneous like jewelry or gold or stocks and stuff, that's wealth. That was considered wealth. But basically what he was saying, he made you your income go up, but you lost wealth under him. So that's why I said, you got to watch what they, you got to listen to what they hear. Then he said another thing. He said, you cannot fix things if 200 years, and I, I did like this quote where he said, you cannot fix things in eight years of 200 years of oppression. And I understand that. Yeah, you cannot fix them, but you cannot just let them linger on and just hope the next person can take care of them as well. And that's why I said about politics. Under the Democratic Party, historically, they've been worse. Uh, me and my stepfather yesterday, we was talking about the Veracon Act and stuff like that. What the... Uh, Paul, yes. Uh, what we was talking about, how to, uh, you remember, uh, y'all used to remember WDA uh, and all these other small uh -huh. radio stations and stuff? That was before you were born, Marsha. That was basically when I was born as well. We had all kind of black radio stations, all kind of stations and stuff. Bill Clinton did that in 1984. What they did, they broke up all of all the little small uh, and then put them in uh, big companies like Vericon, Comcast, and all the other all the other entities and stuff like that all around. And we only got five stations now, five big companies that owns everything, basically a monopoly and stuff like that. Democrats did that. The Warfare Act and stuff like that, they did that as well. Uh, with the fair housing and stuff like that, they did that as well. What they did, that if you have a felony, you cannot live in Section 8, you cannot get government grants to go to schools and different things as well and stuff. That's like well, When they did the 1994 crime bill and stuff. Uh, uh, made it basically made it more harder for black people to get basically uh, made the crack cocaine sentences and everything more extreme than normal. They basically put more black people in jail than uh, than around the world. Right now, we only five percent of the population global population, but we only we twenty five percent of the prison population around the world. That's that what the Democrats did, but that's good and evil and stuff like that. And I'm not saying. What George Bush did, then they de uh they defunded Glass and Steagall. You don't know about that. It's a law and stuff like that. What they basically made that banks with your money in the banks and stuff, they actually can play monopoly with your money. They can borrow your money, and then if they go bankrupt, you lose your money, but the banks get bailed out and stuff like that. That's why banks and stuff. That's why in two thousand eight and stuff like that, the banks had crashed, and the government actually had to uh, bail them out during that process. But I only want to even just stay on all that type of stuff. It's just different things that we could do. Like Bush had his uh, faults too. He had a lot of faults as well. Um, then think about it. I want to read this other quote. Read this quote right here, Marcy. It says, have, have people in your own, own group not sub support you? That's all. I, and basically what she read, she read, have people in your own group not support you. Think, think about this. Yeah. And let's think about this. When a Latino person or anybody else, individual, open up a store and stuff like that in their neighborhood, in a Mexican neighborhood, Mexicans are going to come and support that uh, store. Indians, when the Indians open up a store, Indians are going to support that store. They're going to support it and stuff like that. When any other groups come, Chinese open up a store, they're going to Chinese going to support that store. But when a black person open up, up, open up a store in his neighborhood, blacks are not going to support it. Perfect example, Gary. You don't uh, tell it by their skin color. You tell it because it doesn't matter if they don't support you. You tell it by, it doesn't matter if they're being mean. You tell it by them doing something they're not supposed to do. And you don't. And you know it, they're racist. If don't you, worry about racist and stuff. Yeah. We're not talking about that at, uh, yeah. right now. Uh, <laughs> uh, and what we're trying to say on this point uh, about we're not supporting each other in all all these facilities and everything. That if uh, my brother opened up a clothing line, I should support my brother on his clothing line. What but I go support. But I go. I'm just uh, yeah, a James. metaphor. Yes, but I'm just my brother opened up me do some music and stuff. I should support my brother and promote his music as well. Because he did do music. Yes, but what we do and stuff like that, we hate our own people so much. We hate our own kind so much 
that when they open up something, they do something, we be negative towards that. We don't want to support them. We don't want to life. We don't want to do anything with that person. We only want, we only looking for that downfall of that person during that period of time. Another thing that foreign sell to your own group, like I said, like we don't want to support our own stores that uh, like a neighborhood store that open up in our community. We'll say that price is too high, but you'll go to the, the Mexican store next door and give him all your money. Even though he's taking the money out of your community and stuff like that and feeding his own group, supporting his own people and stuff and building up his own legacy and everything like that. But you don't see that because at the end of the day, you was taught that you never support your, your own people. And it goes back through slavery. It goes, it's a mental thing that we that happens. People don't want to never talk about it and stuff like that. When you get broken up from your families and you were used as cattle, you were just used as workers and stuff like that. You were the, you basically non-existent and stuff like that. You were less than human. You were basically just a cattle for them to use. So you put it in your mind that your oppressor is your, your God. Another thing we want to talk on this on, on this same topic like this. Okay. Educated Negroes leave the community. Yeah. Uh, educated Negroes leave the community. What she read was educated Negroes leave the community or educated people of, of color. Most time they leave their own community and stuff like that. And they basically what you do when we get so much wealth and stuff, we leave we leave the uh the the places we uh, belong to and we take the money out and go uh, support other communities and stuff like that. And that's fine. And I understand you don't want to stay in a, a community and stuff like that because I can't see myself staying in uh, an impoverished community. Go, if I leave the house and stuff, my house going to get broken into. But it's always, I always tell my wife and I tell everybody, it's always a cause and effect of how these things got made and stuff like that. They just didn't happen. People just wouldn't say, oh, bam, the ghetto was just here. The ghetto got actually made by federal government and stuff like that. And it's, it's up to the educated people. When you got common sense and everything, you know how to use You actually got to re utilize your resources to utilize your resources to make sure that everything you do going to benefit your community as a whole instead of individual. I always tell everybody, stop worrying about individualism and worry about group thinking, a group mindset. So whatever we do in life, we always got to focus on group economics because it's fine for me to be worth almost a million dollars or something like that or uh, be worth a lot of money and stuff like that. But then the next, my brother is only worth like $5. That doesn't make any sense. We need to spread the wealth. We need to help one another to build one another up. All right, on this next stanza that we want to read. This is from Carter uh, D. Wilson. We're going to read. When you determine what a man should think, you do not have to concern yourself what he would do. I think you already read that. No, that's a new one. Oh. All right. And what I want to talk about, I, I posted a text. Uh, I posted a uh, post from a TED Talk. Uh, for, it was a white guy that was uh, talking about uh, how black music and everything like that. Uh, we the only group uh, that sex, drugs, sex, drugs, and everything negative twerking and everything negative is always supported in the black community. So negative or like that stuff I'll be saying sometimes. Yes, but let me go and explain what I'm saying. You you never heard a white person sing about killing his own kind. Like, I'm going to go shoot my, you know what I'm saying? You never heard a Jew or anybody else. But in the black community, we support stuff like that. When a white person listens to the music uh, that black people make and stuff like that, they only listen to it. They ain't going to do it to their own brother. But we have a mindset at this moment in time that if it's not about twerking or something about uh, doing drugs or something like that, it's not going to be uh, promoted in our community. And most of this, I've, one thing I can say, I don't want to blame everything on the white man because some of it is our fault because we accept this type of stuff. When you accept filth, filth getting your body, you know what I'm saying? You can't, you can't keep on blaming everybody for your own faults. And what happened is a video like this would never get that many views. I understand that. Most people that talk politics, especially black people that talk politics, would never get that popular and stuff like that. We may get a subset of probably about 150,000 subscribers or more. Probably Some are even probably a little bit more than that. But most times, but if you doing something negative, like acting stupid, doing anything negative and stuff. If I'm acting dumb, but... Yeah, if my little daughter was twerking on this video and stuff like that, it'd get over a million followers and stuff, and everybody love be sharing it and everything like that. But because I'm talking something about positivity and everything like that, this 
It seeps in your veins and stuff like that. And one thing I'll find out about people and stuff like that, people love gutter. And what I mean by gutter and stuff like that, anything that don't edify you and stuff like that, make you a better person, you don't want. What are we gonna read about but anything, I already read that book. That's the book I'm talking about. But anything that uh that that mess you up and stuff does that doesn't benefit you one bit and stuff like that, you love it to death. You'll be singing to it and stuff like that. And that's fine. I, I go to gym and I listen to some music, but I use it as thought, but I don't blame myself. I my my table is full of books right now that I'm reading. I'm reading a, I'm reading a book right now called They Were Her Properties about white women owning slaves in the uh slave uh look, in a slave. Look, I, I listen to rap music, but does that mean I'm gonna do it? No, and it's fine, it's fine, but at the same time, if you keep on listening to certain things, you're going to wind up in your mindset. You're going to wind up thinking like that. But, I'm not, but I'm not like NBA Youngboy and all them other rappers, but I do like their um, music, it's but I'm not with, like them. It's nothing wrong with liking somebody. I'm, what I'm saying is... I said I'm not like them. I, I said it's nothing wrong with liking somebody. What I'm saying is you don't have to worry about liking it. Kind of like what I was talking about this book, They Was Her Property. Did you understand that 40% of uh, slaves were owned by uh, white women? But but how, how media tells you, just like I told you, the media, propaganda and stuff like that, how they told you only white men owned slaves during that period of time. But 40% of slaves, it was one white woman and stuff like that. I, I forgot. I had to uh, look up her name and stuff in the book and stuff like that. Uh, that she took her slave, after they freed the slaves, she took her slaves by gunpoint and marched them down all the way down to Texas. And made them uh, make another harvest. And after she got the harvest and everything cleared and stuff like that, she freed them like two years later. Even Native Americans own slaves, but history would never tell you that and stuff like that, or the media would never tell you that because that's not a narrative they try to, to teach. But on the sex, drugs, and everything negative to uh standpoint that we was talking about and stuff like that, like the white man says, no other group accepts this type of uh degrading of their own uh people. But we accept it as black people because just like I said about what Malcolm told you, uh what he said, and each thing we're talking about. Who taught you to hate yourself? And you have to hate yourself to listen to stuff like this that degrade you, that degrade your women and degrade your men and stuff like that. And say your men are nothing but thugs and drug dealers and all. Think about it. I was listening to an article. Said, uh, I was listening to an article, reading about an article, and the rapper was talking about they was uh, drinking lean. Yeah. Talking about, man, they were sprung on lean, you know, drugs and stuff like that. And they said they were messing them. Dude, I'm going to hit a heart attack. A couple guys had a heart attack on this. Yeah. So, so why? Because what he did, he seen it in music. And the music, the rappers on the music that was getting promoted, that most rappers don't even, and most people don't understand. Black people don't own the music industry. Are you serious about the music? Yes, let me go and finish. Black people do not own the music industry and stuff like that. The music industry basically promotes a certain gender uh, certain type of uh, music that they don't want. They ain't gonna put no black person up on there that's promoting, you know, w you know, unity and stuff like that. They gonna put they gonna put the most gutterest thing there, like a Cardi B, some um, uh, some Megan Thee Stallion and stuff like that. Jermaine Dupri said some um, I think recently on Vlog TV and stuff that he said most of the rappers and stuff like that, these women rappers are basically scripper script rappers. They, they basically what they, he's saying is basically they selling sex. That's the only thing they selling. They talking about, you know, and I understand I'm not getting on all the women and stuff like that because the men are doing the same thing because men are selling violence and the women are selling sex. But what other genre of uh, music is doing that except black music? That's mind control. Think about it. We fight with one another. Think about it. We feel more, we feel more people have lost friendships over this election and stuff like that. Long last, after four, think about it, history. 40 years of negative, we're, we're, just like I always said, we 13% of the population and 2% of the wealth. Uh, we only own 1% of land in America, even though we've been here over 400 years. <laughs> yeah. But you'll fight a person up and down for the Democratic Party or the Republican Party, whoever you agree with and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But your family members that made a messed up potato salad and stuff like that last Thanksgiving and stuff like that, you'll hate them forever. You'll hate them for 20 some years. What? But it's yeah. just a it's just food. But somebody that can affect your life in general, like a politician and stuff, you will love them no matter how bad they do you. Because what what happens is you feel more sorry for the oppressor. I think I was when I told you guys I read uh, I read Up from Slavery. You know, I read that years ago you when I was younger. Told them 
let me speak more. I read the book called Up From Slavery from uh, Booker T. Washington where he was talking about the slave the slaves were felt so, so sorry for their master after emancipation and stuff, they got free. Even though their master never freed them, but after their master fell on hard time, the slaves took food out of their own after they were freed and stuff like that. And they were seeing, they, oh, the master was, Master Joel was feeling, he, you know, he going down. They felt so bad for the master, they took food out of their own kid's mouth to go feed their old master. And that's what we do as black people all the time. We feel so sorry for everyone else, but we don't feel sorry for our own people that's in our own household and stuff like you that. You want to go do everything for the master, but not support your kids. Yeah. Basically, just like she said, you want to do everything else for everyone else, but forget about every, but forget about the most important thing. One thing forget about, about your family member. Don't do that. Think about it. It's, I'm, I want to make an example. When you're on a plane, if, if uh, from you, some of you guys that... Uh, have a road plane. What they first thing they tell you? They said first thing you need to do put your own mask on first before you start trying to put your kids' mask on. Because me gonna explain, Marcia. Uh, because if you fall out, if you try to put your kids' mask on and you fall out, that means now nobody gets saved. That means the kid don't get to saved or you. But if you put your mask on first, make sure yours is secure, and then put the other person mask on. Then both of y'all get saved and stuff. And that's what the black community needs to start thinking about. And I'm not knocking no one else and stuff like that, but we need to start focusing on getting our own community uh, right before we start focusing on some, somebody else. What's up? So, in school, I heard somebody say, we don't, well, let me speak, don't, don't, don't interrupt me, but I heard somebody <laughs> say, we don't need to wear a mask. I heard those things don't even save you. If, and then they said, it's better if you don't wear a mask. And my teacher said, what? And I said, no, I don't call nobody no names and stuff like that. And what I tell my daughter is stuff like that. Because somebody is thinking like, don't worry about what that person does. You just do the right thing. Because it's always much easier. It's hard doing being right. Uh, I mean, doing the right thing at all times and stuff like that. But I always tell my daughter, I always, you always try to be doing right. You always uh, strive to be right. Another thing that we, uh, just like we were saying, we fight amongst each other and stuff like we never support each other. Another thing we do, we wait, we wait for our treasures in heaven. Most black people, especially in church and stuff like that, they bad at they bad at this. They keep on preaching the gospel. Most churches have got money, these especially these big churches, pastors, multimillionaires, and everything like that. I don't know, you know, that's between you and your pastor and stuff. They're between the pastor and God. But at the same time, these churches teaching sit down. These churches teaching people to wait on your treasures in heaven. And I always tell people, I'm kind of like a uh, doctor. I, like, I may not follow the person all the way through. I may not agree on everything. Like Dr. Umar Johnson said, if what type of God do I want to uh, follow? If I got to wait on my treasures in heaven, I don't want to follow that type of religion. So black, as black people, we've been, we the most religious people in the world, but we the most poorest people in the world. Think about that. Because we, what I, what they do, what the media do, and what politicians, what groups do, they put certain people, think about, uh, me going to break this down. When slaves couldn't, uh, when slaves got freed, the first thing they did, they, they never had any education and stuff like that. So what was the most easiest thing to transition to? Being pastors. So you'll have some of the most uneducated people trying to teach you about the Bible. that never been nowhere, never been anywhere in their life and stuff like that. Trying to teach you about God and stuff. Never experienced things. It was a, it was a, uh, you ever seen the movie Good Will Hunt and what uh, Robert Williams was saying? Uh, Will was talking about, yeah, I was reading, you know, I, I read about this, uh, the cathedral and stuff like that. Look how it looked and everything like that. But he said, have you been there? Have you smelled the flowers? Have you been to the roses and all this type of stuff? And most of these jokers never even been nowhere. They ne don't even know anything. But this, so the most educated people got put up in positions of high authority, like being pastor hoods and stuff like that, supporting and and what they do, they don't want to put, they don't want to break the uh mess up their money and stuff like that. And I'm not saying all churches, but 95 percent of these churches, we already know they gutter. Just plain and simple, they they pure gutter. We don't have to. It's not about being politically correct. They pure gutter. They're not there to uh benefit you and stuff like that. They're not there to help you out. They're not there to help the community out. One thing you're gonna find in the black community, you're gonna find churches, you're gonna find liquor stores, you're gonna find cash, you're gonna find cash. Cash loans places. That's what you're going to find in the black community. So if we got so many Memphis is known for the church of capital in the world. So we got so many churches in Memphis and stuff. Why we got so much uh, poverty and stuff in Memphis as well if the churches were actually doing their job. But 
another thing I want to discuss just like this. With, um, let me go read. If you make a man feel that he's inferior, you do not have to compel him to accept an inferior status. So for he will seek it himself. So it's basically, if you make a man feel that he is inferior. inferior, you do not have to compel him, compel him to accept an inferior, inferior status. status, for he will seek it himself. It Himself. And what we're talking about, if you make people feel like they know they nothing anyway, <laughs> Chicago, most black men don't even think they're gonna live past the uh, age of 20. So what so what you saying, you make that person just what I said, mind control. Only thing you're gonna show is instead of showing black excellence on the TV, only thing they're gonna show is negativity, black negativity on TV all the time. So they're gonna they're gonna promote music, bad music that's not gonna edify you like Artists like Tupac saying like Dear Mama or Brenda Got a Baby and stuff. We ain't got them no more. We got a few of them like a J. Cole or something like that. But they, uh, too few, in, uh, it's not that many around. But we got a bunch of gutter guys that's talking about, I'm going to shoot you up. I'm going to do this. I'm going to twerk on you and stuff like that. Well, this, was, this was what we got. You ain't... That's gay. Yeah, but so, so think about that. So if everything that's getting put to the young people and then to you as well, it promotes violence, sexual abuse, uh, drug use. What? How are you gonna be a better person? Kind of like if you if you was growing as a kid and stuff like that. That's the only thing you was taught and stuff. So it's gonna be hard to get out of that. Some people may get so about nine out of ten people, but that one may get out, but it's just gonna be that one. But he's still gonna be hurt from the uh, experience that he took in life and everything like that. So. So that's why, like, I think I, I got a cousin. I was talking about, you know, we need to start focusing on black on black uh, crimes. Yes, we need to focus on that and stuff like that. But that's not all the things, like I always tell you guys. It's always a cause and effect. Like, we didn't bring the guns in our neighborhoods. We didn't bring the drugs in our neighborhood. We didn't take the jobs out of our neighborhoods. So you got to understand that. But at the same time, when a person doesn't even love themselves, how you think they're going to love you at the same time? So they're going to kill you anyway. So then it goes back to, okay, I, I can understand why somebody want to move out of the community. They're going to wind up destroying that person and stuff like that. Even as a real estate investor myself and stuff like that, we buy properties and everything. We rent homes. Mm -hmm. And me and my wife do that. So when we do go and look at homes, and so we looked at one other day and stuff like that in the community and stuff like that. All the wine was taken out of the, the walls. Everything was taken out. Plumber was gone and stuff like that. And then I looked around the community and stuff. Say, minute we put uh, things in, they're gonna come and rob us and take this uh, the, the stuff back out of the uh, walls again. So that's a look, win lose. So instead of trying to me trying to build a community, I cannot build it up because my own people are gonna wind up setting me up anyway. Because at the end of the day, because everybody everybody's black ain't black, and that's why. I, and I always gotta tell everybody all the time. Because people got so much self hatred in themselves and stuff like that that they don't even know what they're doing because their minds are in a carnal state that they don't even know they're doing wrong that they ain't helping nobody they ain't helping their kids and stuff like that still yeah. trying to build their kids still trying to build a house up one at a time and stuff like that they still trying to tear it down what's up sometimes people be like on their phone not paying attention to their kids but that's not what we talking about but for real we talking about like uh um uh, what my dad said uh you. Don't put the kids mask on first. One of the parents have to put their mask on first. If you not a person that don't want to die, don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> like my daughter said and stuff like that. And I always tell like my daughter, if anytime you see me, most time you're gonna all time you're gonna see my daughter when I'm at the gym or something like that. But most time when you I'm always gonna have my daughter with me. She always gonna be in all the things uh, that we do in life. Ain't here, but but she she's working about. and stuff like that, but yeah. that's fine. But most time y'all gonna see me and my daughter, uh we we uh uh, we always gonna be together and stuff like that. And I always tell everybody, we always yeah. gotta put our kids first. If you're one of our fans, you can get one of our autographs or something. Yeah. All right. But then another thing, what we do? Think about this. Like we were saying, if you make a person feel inferior, I want to keep on quoting this. Let me go and say this, Marsha. Right. If you want to make a man feel inferior, you do not have to compare him to accept an inferior status. He will seek it out himself. So think about this. How many of you guys went to and you guys were talking with when, when a person speaks correct English, speaking correct English, and somebody in a, somebody said, "Oh, now you talking white." 
So what do you, so Bailey, what you said, that cause I'm, I'm speaking correct English, you consider correct English white. That's an inferior uh, mindset. That means you're already knocking yourself down already. You saying only black people we need to talk, not use correct English. White people, if you listen to white people, and we live in the South and you live in all around the world, and I've been all around the world, all the, uh, a lot of states and all around these countries and stuff like that. Everybody don't talk uh, correct English, trust me. I know I got a, a big Southern accent and stuff like that. We had President Bush, he didn't talk correct English. Uh, we had a, we, Donald Trump don't talk correct English, but they billionaires and stuff like that. So both, basically what you're saying, and the people that are saying, I had, I had to correct these people. White people don't talk correct and stuff like that. Stop using it as a white phrase. If a person talk correct English, they doing what they supposed to do. And stuff. It's not wrong. You in, in you in uh you in America, you supposed to talk English. It's not wrong to use correct English. That's not a white thing. So anything that's like a white lie, a white lie is considered uh that's not nothing new. So everything that's the media does, and then you've been programmed to do from your parents on up and stuff like that, is if it's white, it's right. Like when a woman uses a white wedding dress, it doesn't mean it's pure. White means pure and all this type of stuff. When you use black, everything black is mean just dark and stuff like that. But like I emphasize on the color spectrum, the color black has every color in it. Let me speak. Yeah. The color black has every color in it. Every color. That means you can get every color out of the color black. That's scientific. So black brings everything. Like a black woman can have a white child, a Mexican child, everything. The black woman, even scientifically, they even said, studies have said, a black woman was the mother of all creation. They probably adopted the child. No, uh, I'm just talking. The, <laughs> the black woman was the mother of all creation. She created all things. And I'm, I ain't talking about spiritual. I'm just talking about everybody came from the black woman. So black, black brings life to you. So that's what uh, another thing. Uh, if you make a man think that he is justified, just justly an outcast, you do not have to order him to to the back door. He would go without being told, and if there is no back door, his very nature would demand one. Okay, think about say? it. What did I say? His very nature would demand one. So if you already made him an outcast, just like in our community and our black politics. Right now, black people, we ask for reparations and stuff. We were asking for reparations and stuff like that. Rep Most people, oh no, reparations. The government don't owe you that now. Reparations are debt owed. They paid uh, reparations to Jews, even though we didn't do nothing with the call call. They paid reparations to Indians. Most people, no, oh, no, they didn't. Yes, they did. They gave them treaties and stuff like that because the white man didn't uh, obey the treaty. That's on them and stuff, but they still got land and all this other type of things like that. So read your freaking history, people. Uh, a U.S. Uh, a U UCLA professor, Lauren Gomez, want to give Latinos reparations. So think about it. When a black person creates something, everybody else jump on the bandwagon ask for the same thing. So everybody else, so now, right now, people that just getting here want reparations too. So all the black people talking about, oh no, we don't do, we don't want the government help. Now, now I'm sorry to tell you, uh, fools, and I'm gonna call you guys fools because y'all don't, y'all don't listen to educate, y'all haven't read a book. But don't call your uh. No, no, nigga, no, I don't care about that. It's like it's not, it's not that type of show. Uh, but if you don't understand history, the U.S. government gave people 50 acres land to uh, move out west. They call it the trailer. They gave people land. Land were worthless. You know what more important? <laughs> Slaves. <coughs> a slave were worth twelve hundred dollars. A land were worth were worth nothing. You ma people make their wealth off slaves and stuff. Human human bodies. So we we give land away all the time. So land that was. So reparations a debt that we built this country for free. We built the White House and everything else. We built it for free. For free, off the backs of us. That's how United. That's how U.S. got. Uh, anytime you have free labor for four hundred years, what do you think you're gonna be a, a superpower? So everybody had to work for their stuff in all the other countries, but in uh, United States, they had free labor. People get to uh, get to just chill. And don't tell me it was just South and stuff like no. What North had slaves to reach a history. It was a different type of slavery and stuff, but it was still slavery. You still um. But think about this thing. So, from a politics uh, standpoint, we have all these things like Clyborne. 
He give what he do. He have a fish fry every year because he keep black people in that mindset that the Democratic Party is for you. So what they do, they give you symbolism to the policies. Yep. We give you, we'll give you, think about it, when Obama was talking to all these rappers and stuff, it wasn't no problem and stuff like that. But many uh, Ice Cube go, so did y'all hear anything about Ice Cube? Is uh, uh, Biden going to meet with Ice Cube now? Because some of y'all Negroes, kind of like I, I said earlier, y'all go against y'all own people for the oppressor. So, Biden is, you think Biden gonna meet up with them? No. So, think about it. They said black men, they were talking about black men, how bad black men was. Uh, what's that? It was another star. Uh, got on CNN, talking about Latino women won, uh, won uh, Biden the election. <laughs> Latino women and black women. Even though Latino women, 35% of them voted for uh, Trump. Even, but... 87% of black men voted for Biden. It actually went up because 12% the last time when uh, it was 86% voted for uh, Hillary and 87% voted for Biden. But you ain't gonna hear that narrative because what they try to do, they try to separate the black man and the black woman. Nope. Saying the black man is inferior, that the black man is stupid. So we're the only group of people that's not even allowed to even say anything because you guys let that happen. And anytime a person put that out, y'all saying he's ignorant. He don't know the facts and stuff like that. Then when he show you facts, you still want to deny it. Because one thing about it, you believe in fantasies, you believe in Wakanda forever and stuff like that. Even on the Wakanda and stuff like that. Think about it on a movie, Wakanda. <laughs> <laughs> Wakanda. I never even liked Black Panther. Most people, oh no, you know, that's a, you know why I like, I like the Killmonger. Uh, I never liked the Black Panther the movie and stuff like that. Why well, I didn't like it and stuff like that. It was the richest country in the world, surrounded by the poorest people, and the only people they were letting in is white people. Think about it. I'm just looking at the inside. So all people they were letting in to help was the White Wolf and all this type of stuff. You looked at the movie. They let a, a white seed, a CIA guy and stuff. So they were helping all other people and stuff instead of helping their own kind. They look like them and stuff like that. That's why I said all black ain't black. Did Black Panther die? Yeah, he died in real life. Now, he was a good guy and stuff like that. But I looked at the movie in a different eyes, a different view than most people. Most black people look at the Wakanda forever and stuff like that. It's like, oh, you know, that's, no, man, that's fantasy. I'm living in reality. And y'all still living in the fantasy world talking about good and evil and stuff like that. Some, do you understand? Some of these, most of these people that you know ain't, ain't nothing but evil. I'm just being honest. And you probably one of them yourself, evil. This is the word. So evil, no evil, and stuff like that. Sometimes evil support evil. So as a uh, as conclusion to the show and stuff like that, I'd like to thank you guys for looking at it and stuff as well. Me and my daughter and stuff. And, uh, if you guys do got time and stuff like that, pick up the book, The Miseducation of the Negro if you, uh, by Carter Goodwin Woodson. If you guys never read it or have read it. And then a book we were all reading uh, on ADOS, uh, ADOSA. Uh, I mean, ADOS, hashtag by uh, Tone talking to Yvette Carnell. We, uh, they reading, they were her property, and she probably having a book reading and stuff like that, and I'm reading this as well and stuff like that. It teaches me a lot of things about, uh, about what the media and stuff like that, what the media and then the textbooks don't teach you and stuff like that. Sometimes you got to go find the knowledge yourself. And uh, sometimes, just like uh, somebody always said, a uh, white person always told me, if you want to keep a black man from knowledge and stuff like that, or put it in a book. <laughs> and sometimes, and it's sad to say, sometimes I think we are worse enemies. And until ever, we get to that point, uh, that's the new Jim Crow by Michelle yeah, Alexander. Have you ever read this book?